In the previous episode, you'll know that you know I've explained why we have concurrency and parallelism. It means that you know we can scale our workload, and we can do more by throwing cores, uh, CPU cores or GPU cores at the problem. In this episode right here, uh, I'm going to actually be talking about some of the challenges that exist for programmers like ourselves uh, on how we can actually write the code to actually take advantage of multi-core uh, processor. So one of the challenges in that I face a lot when I do multi-core programming uh, is something called a race condition. So in this video right here, we're going to be taking a look at an example that will help you understand visually what a race condition is. So let's start by taking a look at our example here. So over here, let's assume that we have a wallet and you know we are storing this somewhere in our database and the wallet has, you know, let's say $10,000, right? Now, what we want to do is we want to spend $5,000. So what you'll see in this uh, in this example here is there are three operations happening. There's a read which is reading the value of how much money is actually in the wallet. And then there's a subtraction operation and then there's an update. So this is how transactions actually, I mean, this is a simplified version, but this is how it actually happens in financial uh, you know, applications. They detect how much money you have in your account. And because you want to spend $5,000, they will deduct $5,000 and send that to a different account. And then they'll do an update call to update that you have 5,000 left. Now, if we have a single threaded single core uh, execution, everything will go normally because it'll just do it one at a time. But in this example I'm showing you is we have two threads, right? So we have two threads and two cores executing in parallel. And let's see what actually happens. So you can see that, you know, it's reading the $10,000 originally, and then it's doing a subtraction, right, on the $10,000 twice. And it's updating the $5,000 as a result. So obviously, we know this is wrong. Uh, the end result should be there's zero left in the wallet. But because of something we call race condition, the result that comes out of the computation is actually wrong. So let's take a look at that one more time. <clears throat> so we start off with having $10,000 in our wallet. We have a read, subtract, update operation. We're executing that together, right? It all in one go. So the CPU reads. So you can see, you know, the cyan dot is actually the CPU execution reading this value. And then the green is also, you know, coming just a little bit later. The execution is happening just a little bit later, maybe just a few microseconds. It's also reading. But because the first operation has not completed the end result is not 5000 just yet and therefore you know the second read operation is still going to see the same value as the first operation so now what happens is it's going to do two subtractions 5000 but both are subtracting from the wrong source value well one of them is subtracting from the wrong source value and then the update is happening Right, so the first update happens, it updates the 5000. And since because the output of the second operation is also wrong, it is wrong, it updates itself on top of the original, resulting in the final 5000 on the wallet. This is a problem in financial systems we call a double transaction or a double payout. This is, well, a double payout can mean many things, but in this case, it's called double spending, where you know a customer may execute multiple transfers in a close, uh, in cl in a very small time frame, and this basically you know uh, allows the customer to spend more money than they actually have in the account. So obviously, you can see that this is can become a big problem if you're a bank. How can you spend more money than you actually have? Right? I mean, it's a fundamental flaw. So this is one of the reasons why having parallel systems or systems that can, uh, you know, execute multiple operations in parallel is so difficult. 
So there are ways to solve this problem. Uh, it's not an impossibility to solve this problem. So in a later video, uh, I'm going to explain a different kind of a, a problem, a different scenario. And basically, we'll also cover the solution of how in programming we can actually solve these problems. This problem doesn't just exist in financial systems. It can exist in many, many places, like in even in games, right? So the general idea is that anytime you have any kind of state so when you read programming documentations uh, or you know you look through communities online you'll see something called state state is basically you know how you represent a piece of information like for example in this case the state is ten thousand dollars that is the original state and is and is what's something we call shared state so basically um you what you're doing here is you have a state which is shared uh, amongst multiple threads so that's why you know we have multiple threads over here reading the original uh ten thousand dollars and then doing the subtraction and then updating uh, on that state that's why it becomes a problem so whenever you have anything related to some kind of state doing this concurrently or in parallel becomes a bit of a challenge and in the later episodes, uh, we'll cover how we can actually solve this very problem. All right, so if you found this video useful, consider becoming a member on our channel. It really supports us, really helps us produce more of this quality content. And we love making these content that help everyone out there. And one of the reasons why I'm making these videos is because later I want to actually talk very deeply about fintech and what are what's involved. And this episode kind of like is lays one of the foundations of some of the things you need to know when you're designing a financial system. Even blockchains have to consider this problem and solve it, you know, uh, and it's one of the most challenges, challenging problem in any financial system. So with that, I want to wrap up this episode. So like and subscribe and become a member. We appreciate your support. And not all the future videos in this channel are going to be free. We are going to put out members exclusive content, uh, you know, on a continuous basis. So with that, I want to wrap up this episode. I will talk to you all in the next one.